to talk about this during our live stream yesterday, but I didn't have time because I had to do two debates back to back. Two bodies, by the way. <laughs> two two bodies back to back. Go check out our live stream from last night if you don't believe me. But I got to talk about two things. Number one, Javante D Tank Davis leaving Al Hain. Then I got to talk about how boxing is trying to trick Javante Tank Davis and Al Heyman out of their position. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, share the video, turn on your notifications, catch me live Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday night at 7.30 p.m. Central Time. I'm also live every Sunday morning with the singing OG KQKC Boxing Network. Sunday morning is 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. Please join the channel as a member. Drop super chats when you come by our live streams and our videos that we do, and please hit me up. In case you ever want to debate, knockoutboxing 86 yahoocom is my email. Or you can just come by the channel when I'm live, and we can get the debate popping right there on the live stream. All you got to do is hit the link. Let's talk about this. First, this idea that Tank Davis was going to leave Al Hain. I got done with my debates yesterday. And then I opened up the panel for the little bit of time I had left. And this shit came up. It came up. And sometimes what I get on my channel from Die Hard Devin Haney supporters, Die Hard Tank Davis haters, is people like to play stupid with me. People like to play stupid to try to win their argument or try to shit on, 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 on whatever it is I'm saying or whatever my train of thought is. But it never works, bro. So, the reason that this whole rumor started or this whole talking point of narrative started with Tank Davis leaving Al Heyman is because a fan asked him, hey man, what happened to that Devin Haney offer? Tank Davis responds, I was supposed to talk to Al Heyman tonight, but he was talking to Steven about that deal he don't think I, I know anything about. So, if you see me somewhere else, now you know why. Immediately, oh man, he's talking about leaving because he said if he goes somewhere else, now you know why. I'm like, bro, he ain't going nowhere. That's not what he meant by that. He meant if you see me fighting somebody else, now you know why. If you see me fighting somebody else, now you know why. No, no, y'all see you. No, no, guy. He said somewhere. Somewhere. That means he's talking about leaving Al Heyman. Okay, cool. So when he announces his next fight and it's under Al Heyman, who's right? Who's right? Who's right? If his statement meant, if I don't fight Devin Haney next, then I'm going somewhere. I'm going to another platform. I will no longer be fighting on Amazon. I will no longer be fighting under Al Heyman. If I don't get the Devin Haney fight next, if that's what it meant, then that means his next fight should be through another promotional outfit, right? Y'all see how stupid some of this shit can be, man? But when he fights under Al Heyman, which he will be fighting under Al Heyman, when he fights under the PBC, which he will be fighting under the PBC, when he fights on Amazon Prime, which his next fight will be on Amazon Prime, and I'm proven right, as I often am, all the fucking time, then what? Oh, no, he still meant it how I said it, but how I said he meant it is what happened. You think he meant he was leaving Al Heyman. I think he meant he'll be fighting somebody else. What I think he meant is what actually happened. What you think he meant didn't happen, but you were right. Okay, bro. Okay, y'all. Tank Davis is leaving Al Heyman. Whatever y'all say, bro. So there's that. That shit is it's, it's petty, right? Anybody with a brain like that's thinking logically, you can read the text, you can see what he's responding to and know exactly what he means. I picked up on it the moment that I read it. But, you know, whatever fits our talking points, just know eventually he's going to have a fight. And eventually that fight is going to be under Al Heyman. And eventually, 
he's going to be fighting on Amazon Prime and he's not leaving Al Heyman. So my interpretation of what he meant is going to be what's proven right over time. But y'all keep living in la-la land over there. All my Devin Haney fanatics and Tank Davis haters. Y'all keep keep living over there and tell me tell me that he meant this over there. When what I'm saying he actually meant is what's actually going to happen. And we'll talk about it when the time comes, I guess. Now, boxing trying to trick Tank Davis and Al Heyman out of their spot. This was supposed to be a live stream that I was going to do. This was supposed to be me cooking on a few talking points. But I got some time to do it right now. Since I couldn't do it yesterday, I hope y'all don't mind. What you guys need to understand watching this video, whether you are a Tank Davis fan or a hater of his, or you team PBC, or you team Matchroom, you team Boxing, you team Top Rank, you team Devin Haney, or you hate Devin Haney, you just come over here to look for talking points to, to speak against Devin Haney because you have none of your own. Whatever you are here for, try to be objective and hear what I'm saying. The worst thing that happens to guys that are old boxing power brokers, meaning top rank, HBO, guys that have been around boxing for a long time, Barry Hearn, these sanctioning bodies that Bob Abram has long standing decades and decades of, of, of experience and, and, and relationships with. The worst thing that could happen to them was what Floyd Mayweather and Al Heyman did. Because see, Floyd Mayweather and Al Heyman took all of the power and shift the entire power dynamic to where it went from HBO putting on the biggest fights to Showtime putting on the biggest fights because they had Floyd. It went from Bob Abram and Top Rank having the biggest events to Floyd Mayweather and Al Heyman having the biggest events. And Floyd was able to get multi, multi, multi million dollar deal. And he was a power broker where Bob Abrams fighters, shit, dudes over from the UK like Ricky Hatton, guys from other countries like Marcos Madonna, boxing had to run through Floyd. He was your bag, he was your payday, he was the way that you had to get your money. See, guys like Bob Abram, they loved it. They loved that model when it was Oscar De La Hoya. They loved that model when they had Miguel Cotto in his heyday. Hell, they love that model now when they're the one with Monster in a way. And Cool Boy is the one that got to fly across the ocean and go get that bag with Monster in a way. Because he that guy over there in Japan. Right now, you at 122 pounds, you want a shot at Monster, you going to have your ass over there in Tokyo eating sushi and shit. If you, if you motherfucking MJ Akhmedaliev and you want that shot next, guess what, bro? Louis Neary, he's, he reportedly getting that shot next. Guess what, bro? Guess what, Louis Neary? Monster anyway ain't coming to Mexico. Gonna take your ass over there to Japan. So it's not so much that Bob Abram doesn't like A side, B side, or leverage in boxing, or that he doesn't understand it. He understands it very well. He exercises it every chance that he gets. The main thing is he doesn't like it when he's the one that doesn't have it. So he's looking for a way to make what Al Heyman is doing to him over in America go away. And at the end of the day, Al Heyman is whooping his ass at every single turn when it comes to turning a profit in boxing here in America and when it comes to building his fighters here in America to where he can actually make money off of them here in America. You don't think Bob Abram would like to have Canelo Alvarez you don't think he would like to have Tank Davis? You don't think he would have liked to have been a part of Earl Spence, Terrence Crawford? 
So what boxing is trying to get people to do and people to believe is that this work that Tank Davis has put in, this work that Al Heyman have put in, it means nothing. So they are getting media and they're getting fight fans who are uneducated or ignorant or they hate Tank and they hate Al Heyman just enough to where they will push for these guys to give away everything that they have worked for. Everything that they have worked for. Some guys work mainly for belts. Some guys work mainly for legacy. Some guys work mainly for money. And at the end of the day in boxing, the ones who can get to the money and make themselves the giver of all the paychecks are the guys that have the leverage. Shakur Stevenson in top rank had leverage over Frank Martin. So the PBC would have had to send Frank Martin over there. But Frank Martin pulled out the fight. Top rank, Shakur Stevenson had leverage over Edwin De La Santos. So Edwin De La Santos had to take his ass over to top rank. Promoters don't care about not having other people part of the business. Like top rank has no problem when two fighters from a different promotional company fight but only one promotional company gets to put on the event as long as they're the ones that get to put on that event. What becomes a problem is when two promotional companies have two different fighters and they put on an event and Top Rank has to send their fighter over to that other promoter. They don't like that. They want a cut of that. And that is what you see people trying to do to Tank Davis right now in and Al Heyman, it is no coincidence that Matchroom, Eddie Hearn, Bob Arum, Top Rank are trying to attach themselves to Saudi Arabia and Prince Turkey Ali Al Sheikh. They're trying to attach themselves to him because their events that they're putting on here in America aren't competing against the events that Al Heyman and the PBC are putting on here in America. He is literally running them out of America because they know that here in America all roads lead to him. So they're looking for a way out. You look at all of the big names over at Top Rank. All of the, all of the big names or all of the guys at Top Rank. Every 160 pound fighter that they have. Who was their biggest fight? Canelo Alvarez. Where Canelo Alvarez at? The PBC. Who is who? Who's in line to be the big superstar from 160 to 175 when Canelo Alvarez get done? David Benavidez. Where is David Benavidez at? So everything that Al Heyman has in place, whether your name is Janabek over there at top rank, whether your name is Berlanga over there, at Matchroom, Diego Pacheco over there at Matchroom, whoever you are from 160 to 168, Zach Parker over there in the UK, all roads lead to what? To get your bag, get your big fight. Where they lead to? They all lead to Canelo Alvarez right now. And then behind him is motherfucking David Benavidez. They don't like that. So they'll say, we can just make this fight over here in, in 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 Saudi Arabia. We can just we can just make this fight in Saudi Arabia. Trying to make what Al Heyman does, Noel and Void. You take it down to the other cash cow, Tank Davis. All the names that all the names that Bob Abram got over there at top rank. Shakur Stevenson, Vasily Lomachenko, Keyshawn Davis, Teofimo Lopez. Who they biggest fight? What's the fight for them that could get them the biggest bag possible? You look at all the guys over there fucking it with Eddie right now, fucking with uh, Oscar De La Hoya right now, over there on the zone and Matchroom and Golden Boy, Floyd Schofield, William Zapata, Devin the Dream Haney, Richardson Hitchens, Ryan Garcia. Who they biggest fight? Who they biggest fight? 
Who the guy that they get the most money and most exposure fighting? Y'all know his name. Say it with me now. All at the same time, Javante Tank Davis. So they know this. So what do they try to do? They don't want all roads for all they fighters to lead to him. Where he got all the power. Hey, my door open. Bring your ass on over here. <laughs> Bring your ass on over here. No, you can't be a part of the production. <laughs> Sorry. No, you know what? You know what? We got America on lock. You can go ahead and distribute it in the UK, though. <laughs> oh, it's Williams and Payton? Oh, we got America on lock. You can distribute it in Mexico, though. But all the, the pay-per-view money from America is coming to us. They don't want to be in that position, bro. All the live gate money is our event that's coming to us. He don't have no name without my guy. They worked for that, to be in that position, and people are trying to disrespect it. That's why when Devin Haney fights Regis Program, you don't, you, they don't talk about Saudi because the guy that they bagging got the leverage in that situation. That's why when Shakur has fought every fight that he's had in his career, you didn't hear Bob Abram bring up Saudi Arabia. But in the case of Tank Davis, everyone is bringing up Saudi Arabia because they don't want shit to go through him. They don't want another Floyd Mayweather situation. They don't want to accept their spot. The promoters don't. The fighters don't. You think You think any man, these are all men we talking about for the most part. You think any man want his bad to have to be tied to another man for his whole career, no matter what he do. No matter what he accomplished, no matter how much his fans punch and kick and scream and yell, and no matter how many narratives they come up with, no matter how many how many talking points they come up with, you think another man want his bag to always have to be tied to this other man over here? You think that's what they want? You think Eddie Hearn, for all his fighters that he's trying to build, you think Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya, for all the fighters he's trying to build. He's trying to build William Zapata. He's trying to build Ryan Garcia. They trying to build Floyd Schofield. They want to build up Devin Haney. These guys want to build up all these fighters into their own stars, no matter how much promotion they put in them over here in America, no matter how much money they put into them, no matter how much they invest in them, who do they all got to see to get the bag over here? Who do they all got to see to have that biggest moment? That's why they're not trying to respect that young man's position. That's why you hear people telling him, come down off your high horse. I don't care where the fight happens. I don't care where the fight happens. Why can't the fight just happen in Saudi Arabia? If our only two options... My homie right side was telling me uh, last night If our only two options are either Not getting the fight Or them fighting in Saudi Arabia why, is, why don't we just want the fight Those aren't our only two options See those may be the only two options For Devin Haney Or Devin Haney fans But the other option is the one Where you swallow that tough pill That's a tough pill to swallow that same pill that Mayweather had to swallow when he was fighting motherfucking Oscar. The same pill that, that uh, Hagler had to swallow when he was fighting Ray Leonard. The same pill that Pacquiao had to swallow when he was fighting Floyd. That same pill, bro. You, you got to swallow that shit. And that's, how you, that's how it's going to go. That's how it's going to go, bro. And... I know y'all don't like to hear that shit, but that's how it's always been. That's how it's going to continue to be. People learn from their mistakes, man. Al Heyman feels like he, he Earl Spence made a mistake. Al Heyman was telling him he asking for too much. You're giving up too much of your leverage to make this fight happen. We, su we support and we applaud Earl Spence for doing that, giving in, giving what we want. But it wasn't a decision that was in his best interest. And at the end of the day, any reasonable person, if it would have came out that the fight fell through because Terrence Crawford wanted a coin toss to see who walked out last, or it would have it would have came out in reports that the fight between Spence and Crawford fell through because Crawford wanted a 50-50 split with him, then I, we would have cooked Bud Crawford to this day. 
for ducking, for asking for shit that the numbers and, and his leverage said he had no business asking for. You the reason the fight didn't happen. Same thing here. Same thing here, bro. If this fight don't happen because these dudes that couldn't get their revenue to a certain point to have any leverage, these dudes that are failing here in America, if the fight don't happen because they don't want to accept their position here in America and they want to take their ass over to Saudi Arabia, but the dude that did build himself up over here in America is telling you, nah, we, nah. Then I'm blaming the motherfuckers that's trying to go to Saudi Arabia and not humbling themselves. It's a very simple concept. I don't understand why people don't understand it. Boxing is trying to trick Javante Tank Davis and Al Heyman out of the position that they have earned. All of them had, had every opportunity. As a matter of fact, Devin Haney has had more opportunities. He had 31 opportunities. 31 professional opportunities to make himself a star. Tank Davis has had 29. Shakur Stevens has had over 20 opportunities to make himself a star. William Zapata got a lot of fights. Ryan Garcia got a ton of fights. All of these guys got the same opportunity. Every time they step inside that square circle to capture people's imagination, they all got the same Twitter he got. They got the same goddamn Instagram he got. They all got access to the same social media tools that he got access to. But because you did it less successfully, now someone is going to be tricked out of their position? Nah, bro, it don't work that way. It'll never work that way. So, again, it's not me, it's you guys. If you're responsibly pushing for the fight and you're taking your pride out of it, you would tell these guys, hey, man, it is what it is. You got you to you do what you got to do to get the fight. And you got to do what you got to do to get the fight. You can't be all humble and shit over here, but then act like you got pride over here. Hell, you should have had pride over there. This is the person you'd be humble with because he your gateway to the biggest bag. Because you know Tank will put a rematch clause on all these guys. What if they beat him twice? Ugh. Beat him, he put a rematch clause, rematch him, then you beat him again. You the man. And it ain't no question. Pay the cost to be the boss, man. Right? But that's what I mean for those of y'all that don't understand. These promoters and fighters are trying to trick that man out of his position because they're less successful than him. Eddie Hearn and Bob Irvin are trying to trick Al Heyman out of his position because he's kicking their ass over here in America. And all roads lead through him, whether it's Canelo and David Benavidez, one, like 168 and 175 and 160, all go through them. 147, 154, Jerome Boutinis. Terrence Crawford and Earl Spencer are over there. So it's them two right now, but when they get done, it's Jerome Boutinis, who we tied to. 140 down, it's Tank Davis. Who he tied to, bro? They don't put any work over here, and they corner in the market if you're paying attention. And now that the market is getting cornered, motherfuckers is trying to run over here to Saudi Arabia and tell you it don't matter that the market got cornered on them. That's what's going on. Bob Aram and Eddie Hearn ran to Saudi Arabia. Al Heyman got a deal with a $1.5 trillion company. They can put up every bit of as, as much money as they want on boxing, just like Saudi Arabia can. Ain't nothing Saudi, ain't nothing Turkey Ali, Ashik Ali can can afford in boxing that Jeff Bezos can't afford in boxing him damn self. That's what Al Heyman did. He doing you the American fight fan a favor. He trying to bring you the big fights here in your country and y'all shitting on him for it. And when he can't get the big fight over here in this country, he still sends his fighter, Stephen Cool Boy Steph, over there to Japan to get the biggest bag. PBC done cornered the market, y'all. All big fights lead through them. Canelo signed to him. That's everybody's biggest bag from 160 to 175. And right behind him, the next burgeoning star is David Benavidez. All roads lead through them for big fights. If you got a fighter from 160 to 175, you're going to have to be fucking with the PBC if you want to get a bag. Or, or you can send your fighter over to Saudi Arabia because you can't compete over here. Which you end up 
overpaying your fighter and hurting his value. So when you eventually do have to come back, you won't have no leverage at the negotiation table because the event that you did over there is losing money. And it's going to be easy to do the books and point to, yeah, he got paid $20 million over there. He got paid $15 million over there. But the event lost $10 million. We ain't paying him that. Here's what we can pay because we about making money over here. <laughs> they got they got 160 175 locked down, bro, for the foreseeable future. Then, <laughs> 147 154 Earl Bud, Jerome Boots in this. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, dog. Shit on lock. You got Virgil Ortiz over there. What's his biggest fight? What's his biggest fight? Jerome Boots in this, right? 140 down. We already discussed the tank shit, man. We already discussed the tank shit, bro. All of them fighters that Bob Abram got in top rank, this at 135 and 140, tank their biggest fight. All them fighters that Eddie Hearn and Oscar De La Hoya got at 140 and 135, tank their biggest fight. And dudes don't want to, they don't want to capitulate that. They want to trick him and Al out their position that they earn, bro. And they got fans talking about stupid shit that don't make no sense. He should just go to Saudi Arabia and give away all the work they put in. Just go be Al Heyman. Should just, Al Heyman don't even do press conferences, so he won't even go over there to be a figurehead because he don't do press conferences and shit. So all the work he done did to build his company and build his platform and make sure he got the fighter that's the biggest star. You telling his guy that they gotta go over there and people ain't gotta come see them? Boy, you gotta be out your mind, boy. You gotta be out your mind, man. They trying to trick him out their position because Tank Davis is in the same position as Floyd Mayweather and Al Heyman. It's doing even bigger things because he got the cash cow or potential cash cows at every single weight class that matters right now. The small weight class is not so much. But anything 130 to 140, Tank got that on lock. 147 to 154, PBC got the biggest names there. Tim Zoo, Terrence Crawford, Earl Spence, Jerome Boutinis. All these fights. Virgil Ortiz wants something, he's going to have to come over there. 160 to 175, David Benavidez and motherfucking Canelo Alvarez right now. They got the shit on lock over here, bro. And boxing don't like it. Eddie Hearn and Bob Ever don't like it. They would have to bend to Al's terms to get their fighters their biggest fights. They don't like that they would have to send their fighters over to Amazon Prime and ESPN can't be a part of that shit. Got to send your ass over to Amazon Prime and the zone can't be a part of this shit. Not here in the U.S. Y'all can have the U.K. shit, though. Y'all can have the U.K. shit, though. The market's cornered, y'all, if you're paying attention. And don't nobody work as hard as Al Heyman has and, and Eddie Hearn. Not Eddie Hearn. I don't know where they came from. Al Heyman has and Tank Davis had. Nobody works that hard to corner the market and get in the position that they in only to give it away because people don't want to accept their spot. Y'all crazy as hell, man. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Comment below, smash the like, sub to the channel. I'll see y'all soon. Peace out. <laughs>